In your latest campaign, you sent out anywhere from 100 to 200, maybe even 300 emails. Your open rate seems decent. The reply rate is horrendous. There's a way to fix that without necessarily causing huge damage. And I addressed this earlier in a past episode. This concept, however, the tools in this episode is going to revolutionize and fix your outreach problems forever. You're going to love it. Hey, 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 everyone. Welcome to another great episode of the Sales Evangelist Podcast. I'm your host, Donald C. Kelly, the Sales Evangelist. And I'm so excited for another great episode. I'm so excited to be here with you today. And on this episode, I have an amazing guest. His name is Drew Seacrest. And I want you to go ahead and connect with him. Drew actually was one of the first 36 employees at Salesforce. Drew addressed a challenge that many of us are facing right now as B2B sales professionals, where a bunch of our cold emails are not getting responded to. So what do organization do? They ratchet it up. They go more. However, this is going to damage your brand. As I addressed in one of my past episodes, I have a link down below that goes back to some of those ones. It was a series that I did. But the concept that Drew talks about is something that's age old, and it works, it works, it works. You're going to love it. If this is your first time listening to our podcast or watching one of our videos, subscribe so you can be notified every time we launch a new one. As we dive into this episode, you get a chance to learn about Drew and how he is the founder and the CEO of an organization, Connect the Dot, and how this powerful technology is revolutionizing the world for BDRs and for account executives like you. Check it out. Drew, welcome to the show. Donald, thanks for having me. I'm pumped. I'm really looking forward to this conversation uh, because in in building pipeline, there's a sometimes we tend to try to work uh, salespeople work harder than we need to, and there's more effective ways that we can do this. Mm -hmm. And I'm really excited to tap into your insights on this. But before we dive in, tell us a little bit more about your background. I know you come come from Salesforce, and and tell us a little bit more about what you do today, and then we'll dive into the story about how this all married together. That sound fair enough? It sounds great. Yeah. Yeah. So. uh, my background, I grew up on the East Coast in Pennsylvania and, and uh, went to school on the East Coast. And, and shortly after college, uh, I ended up uh, cold emailing uh, Mark Benioff when he was starting Salesforce.com. And uh, I actually, long story short, uh, I, I was trying to get him to uh, partner with my company at the time so that we could resell Salesforce. But this was at the mm-hmm. very, very early days. Salesforce only had a beta product at that point. And um, he emailed me back really quickly and said, uh, we're not going to resell our product. We're not going to have a reseller network. We're going to sell it directly with our own sales team. And I thought what they were doing was really amazing. And I said, basically, well, then we should talk about something else. Like, you know, talk about you hiring me. And he said, fly out to San Francisco and let's <laughs> talk. And this whole thing happened in like a flash. You know, I flew out to San Francisco, met with Mark, um, met with a bunch of the other, you know, original people on the executive team. And he, he gave me an offer right away, and I ended up working with uh, with him and Salesforce.com for for ten years, uh, from pre revenue and my thir- goodness, thirty six people all the way to thousands and thousands of people and over a billion dollars in top line revenue. And uh, so that that was that's kind of my origin in Silicon Valley. I moved from the East Coast to San Francisco, and and uh, really jumped into the deep end. And um, fast forward to today, just so you can kind of connect the dots on my story here. Um, I'm now CEO of a company called Connect the Dots, and we're headquartered in San Francisco. <laughs> and Connect the Dots is uh, we're, we're a startup. We're Series A uh, funded startup by, by Norwest and some other uh, really great uh, venture investors. And um, we are uh, uh, about 65 people, and we have a product that helps people uh, figure out how to leverage their networks to drive pipeline among other things. Mm. So uh, that's the super brief version of my background. This is awesome, man. And uh, so, you know, Uncle Mark um, over there. Uh, yeah, as we call Uncle him. Mark. <laughs> this is so cool. Uh, well, well, fun stuff. And Salesforce is obviously one of those iconic companies. Let me tell you my first Salesforce story. I was in college and my my uh, we, we were taking this marketing program and our professor was fascinated by Salesforce and this cloud software. And I'm like, I don't get what they're talking about with cloud. Uh, I'm like, it's just a software, right? <laughs> and, just, and then uh, um, he was like, this company called Salesforce. And I'm like, Salesforce, okay, they must do staffing. And <laughs> mm-hmm. 
<laughs> didn't quite get it. And he taught us and got introduced to Salesforce and the CRM and um, the powerful capability of that. And so, and obviously yeah. the world is, uh, the world is built on Salesforce now, the sales world. So. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. And I, I kind of agree with you and were your professor that um, the, uh, uh, you know, the name Salesforce, I thought it was very limiting. It was really good for the very yeah. first product that they made, the Salesforce automation product. But now it does yeah. all these things and the name seems like it doesn't really apply anymore. And and I remember in the very early days, we we got that question a lot. Oh, do you staff salespeople? Oh, yeah. That's all we do. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it, yeah, despite, I don't know if you can say it's a bad name, but despite the name, you know, clearly the company has gone on to incredible <laughs> heights. So something's working. When you can get to that point where you, you, you know, you're Salesforce, people figure it out, you know, at that point. <laughs> You you become a I don't know if they ever became a verb really. Do you Salesforce anything? Maybe not. Yeah. Maybe not a verb, no. but certainly a really really well known brand at this point. Yeah, so cool, man. Well, let's talk about that experience you got there. You, you this this you fell upon or developed this idea of leveraging relationship. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about what. Tell me the story, and then we could talk about what that is exactly. Yeah. Um, well, I'll go back to the very early days of Salesforce when I got there, and because um, that's really the origin of this idea for this new company, Connect the Dots. It goes back to 1999 yeah. when I showed up in San Francisco and and uh, got a desk uh, in the office, and we we're all on one floor, and it was a small office, so all of us were together in this one room, and uh, and. I got a territory and I had to go sell into this territory. So my first role there was an account executive and I didn't know anybody really west of the Mississippi at that point in my life. I you know, was 26 years old. I'd grown up on the East coast. I think I'd been to California one time before that. Um, but you know, I didn't have any network to tap into and, and that's okay. You don't necessarily need a network in order to be able to sell, but man, it really helps a lot. And so what I found over time is we started to sell bigger and bigger companies um, and we're trying to sell into these complex environments when you've got um, uh, you know, multiple people involved in making a decision. It really, really helps if you can figure out some warm introductions into the right people. Um, that way you can yeah. get a meeting. First, the first and most important thing is, can I even get my foot in the door? Will they take my call? Will they take my meeting? Um, and if you know somebody, the, ch the probability that you can break through the noise and get to them goes up exponentially, right? You know, if you get a call from a friend, Donald, and they say, hey, Donald, you know, I, you know, we know each other for the last 15 years. We're good friends. I'm working at this new company. I think we do something that could really help you with your podcast. Um, can we schedule 15 minutes to let me explain this new thing that we do that can be helpful for you? And the probability that you're going to say yes is pretty high. But if you got the same yeah. message from somebody you didn't know at all, probability that you just click delete on that email um, or delete mm -hmm. on that voicemail or however they try to reach you is extremely high because there's just so much noise. Yeah. How, do, how do I know I should trust this person? There's so many people selling so many things these days. So um, yeah, I, I figured out pretty early on and you know, I'm not the only one. I, I learned this from the team at Salesforce, the founding team, that uh, these relationships were critical. All the first users of Salesforce were, peop were people that, pe that Mark knew, you know, or friends yeah. of Mark knew. And so he tapped into that. And then, you know, we kept going beyond that. The those are the first beta users. And then the next ones that were started to be our first paying customers were also people that Mark or other early executives knew. They tapped into their personal Rolodexes. And literally these were Rolodexes back then, you know, like phys <laughs> physical paper Rolodexes with business cards. And then, yeah. um, and then gradually over time, you know, LinkedIn came out at some point while we were, while I was at Salesforce in the early days. And, you know, LinkedIn was a, a new way that helped you see who knew who. And it was small in the yeah. beginning. And it was actually pretty, like in the beginning, in some ways it was maybe better um, because it was small and really only the people that were connected on it were people who really knew each other. Um, yeah. So it became useful. We could see who knew who on LinkedIn. It wasn't comprehensive. It wasn't like everybody you'd ever known, but it was a, a set of people that you'd linked in with. And so we could use that to figure out who did Mark know or who did, you know, Carl Schachter, my boss know, or who did Susan St. Ledger know, my other boss. And, you know, who, who are these, who are the people that we could leverage to get into these, um, these companies that we're trying to sell to. 
and and that was helpful. And uh, so m many of our best deals came from that. Came from somebody knew somebody at the company that gave us the opportunity to get the meeting. It also set you in kind of uh, the front runner position because you were a trusted person. You already had a track record with this person, so they were kind of inclined to hear your story and inclined to go with you if your solution was going to be something that would would uh, be a uh, you know, solve the problem that they had. And uh, so that was great. And then I, I think, you know, over time, that's just what we did. And the problem was we couldn't make that happen all the time. You know, sometimes we'd serendipitously kind of stumble into a warm relationship that we could leverage, but we couldn't just like click a button and then run a list of all the companies that we're trying to get into and see all the relationships that we can leverage to get to the decision makers at that at those companies could never do that mm -hmm. that was just never a possibility and um so fast forward to today that's actually what connect the dots does connect the dots lets b2b sellers run that list they can click a button and it shows them all of these relationships across all of these companies and the specific people that they want to sell to and how to get to them. Who are the people that I know, if I'm a B2B seller, who do I know yeah. well that knows the person that I want to sell to well? And actually, we go beyond that now. Now it's, a, imagine if I'm an SDR and I, you know, I, I don't have much of a network at all, right? So I don't know a lot of people, but I'm connected to my coworkers mm -hmm. and my company. And so I'm connected to all my coworkers and then all my coworkers are connected to people we want to sell to, potentially, or the people they know are connected to the people we want to sell to. So that's three degrees yeah. of separation. And we enable all that and all like click one button and you see the entire list of all these relationships that you could be leveraging. So an SDR could see that your CEO knows uh, an investor who knows the CEO of the company that you're trying to break into. And that they're all strong relationships because we actually have the special ability to calculate how well people know each other. And uh, mm -hmm. that, that, that is based on all our users when they create an account uh, on Connect the Dots. Uh, we, uh, they connect all of their email accounts to Connect the Dots, which has a treasure trove of all of the communication history between you yeah. and everybody else you've ever communicated with. And you can connect personal and professional email accounts. So you could have an email account at work that you've been using for five years. But if you're my age, if you're my age, you can have a, a personal email account that you've been using for 20 AOL. something years. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> way back when. I was never an AOL guy, but I, you know, I got a Gmail account the very first year they came out. And that's 20 years ago now. And yeah. um, so, you know, all of that is brought into this massive graph of relationships. And, and now you as a B2B seller have this incredible map showing you this is the shortcut into a company uh, instead of. The current kind of state of the art is okay. Let's load up our spam cannon, and, <laughs> and or spam machine gun, and fire. Can off I borrow beam. that term? <laughs> Go for it. That's yours. You can trademark it. And uh, and you know, maybe we can spam somebody into submission, and they'll eventually agree to take a meeting with us. Um, that's yeah. that's kind of a losing strategy. I mean, it's really like, statistically, it's a losing strategy. Uh, you're sure not going to have many people reply to that. Statistically, it's a super winning strategy to leverage your warm relationships, and uh, so that's what we're enabling. So, uh, so this this is cool. How do I? And I, I think this it makes sense on how this helps us build pipe because one, it cuts down the. I mean, the, the familiarity automatically cuts out some of the the garbage. Your trusted source, and yeah, you're not sending out you know a hundred emails. But the emails you're sending are quality, and that increases the chances of that deal or the pipeline that you're creating lasting or actually progressing. Absolutely, right? yeah. I mean, our our goal is our goal is like there should be no such thing as a cold email anymore. Everything should be a warm email. Be. Yeah. So here's the thing: why I'm so excited about this, and we're gonna have a post interview call talk as well, <laughs> um, because one of the things that I just did with my team. Um, and literally, if I show you my calendar, episode number 1646, 1647, and 1648 is on the strategy that we started implementing internally. And it's on this idea that I've came to realize that if you engagement, I mean, and it's nothing that I knew underneath the sun, 
But what, when we looked at my BDR's deals that actually turned into pipe and some of the deals that I have that turned into pipe, it came from one, there was relevance. So it was like the right people, which was like, you know, based on some triggers and so, and so forth. Two, it was engagement. And how we classify engagement is that interaction between the individual and the prospect. And then the third thing was that led to conversations and those led to appointments. Mm -hmm. And the ones that we just did the spray and pray, or they did a blast as from the BDR campaign, it was, they had decent open rates, but then the conversation and engagement weren't there. But a couple of these people that we just had engagement with on LinkedIn, like some genuine engagement, those emails were just like out the roof. And we call that a point of reference. The prospect sees and they have some kind of point of reference to see you're not a, uh, you know, a, a terror trying to rob them or steal them of money. So going back to that, I, I, I'm on the same page and I, I love this, um, this concept. What I want to get back to is the how. Mm -hmm. How does this happen? And yeah. be antagonistic and say, why can't I just use LinkedIn to make this happen sure. per se? Yeah. Um, so uh, we've, we've kind of like in my career, I've done the max you can possibly do with LinkedIn and kind of push it to the limits. Yeah. And, and the, the classic challenge with LinkedIn and by the way, LinkedIn's amazing. You know, LinkedIn's really yeah. amazing. It's, it's how we all kind of have our professional profiles and it's the best way I believe on the planet to, uh, you know, market your business. If you're in, in B2B, um, you post to your followers, you post to your connections and, and it really is an amazing tool. Um, but that kind of comes at a bit of a cost because it, the network has mm -hmm. grown so much without without having a clear indication of who really knows who. So people are LinkedIn, yeah. but you know, on average, you probably, you know, uh, it, it depends on who you ask, but you know, on average, yeah. probably somewhere between fifty to ninety percent of your LinkedIn contacts you don't know. And yeah. so it's they're they're people you know I don't know. I linked in with that person maybe at a trade show 15 years ago, so you know in Dallas or something. I don't I don't really know. So if you yeah. if you're trying to tap that network um, and trying to you know if you're a B two B seller and the specific thing you're trying to accomplish is, hey Donald, I see you know the you know it looks like you're linked into this person I'm trying to get to. Could you make an introduction for me? Um, so the problem is that uh, you know somewhere between five to nine times out of ten you're going to say, I don't really know that person. I'm sorry. Uh, so I can't, yeah. or I don't know that person. Well, I can't really make an introduction for you. So that's a problem that we're trying to solve. And the way that we solve it, you, had, you said the how uh, yeah. is we have, we have one thing that's, that doesn't exist anywhere else, at least not really at, at, in this way or at the scale. And that is relationship strength. Mm -hmm. That means how well people know each other. And that's, Really simple based metaphor. Based on the emails as well. Yeah, it's based on the emails. That's right. So, and we simplify, simplify it down into just these three dots. And three dots are um, either the dots are uh, empty dots uh, or gray dots. And that, that means that you've been on an email thread with this person, but you don't really, doesn't look like you know them. You've never had a significant email exchange. If it's one dot, that means it looks like you have a little bit of a relationship called a weak relationship. Two dots, we call it a familiar relationship. And then three dots, that's a strong relationship. So if you look across um, all of the contact, so that's that's one thing, that's one thing. Um, the other thing is we let you combine into a single view all of the people in your life that you know via LinkedIn, so everybody you've ever linked mm -hmm. into, plus everybody you've ever emailed with into a consolidated view. And we do, do deduplicate that and show you a clean, consolidated record for each of those people. And uh, so for me, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a, an old Silicon Valley guy at this point, uh, been here since, you know, so you know the story, 99 when I showed up. Um, I have, <laughs> I've connected five email accounts and I've connected my LinkedIn account. And that totals, if you, it's analyzed all of the email communication and discovered who are these people that I've emailed with and who are these people I've linked in with over the past couple of decades. And there are 26,000 people my goodness, bro. It's a lot. And, uh, you know, a lot of people. And that's that, not even talking about their branches yet. <laughs> no, that's this is just my first degree. So, so their, yeah. bran their branches, the people I can get to via that network is over a million people. And then I don't even know what the number is when it goes out to th third degree. I don't know that number. Mm -hmm. um, so it's gargantuan. But I can get to, yeah. you know, I can, I, I can look up Elon Musk. I can see how I can get to Elon Musk. I don't know Elon Musk, but. 
I can see who I know who knows Elon Musk, and I can see who knows him well that I could tap into. And so yeah. I can find the highest probability paths to be able to get to you know, the people I want to get to based on how well they know them. So the um, relationship strength is really critical. Without relationship strength, if you've got a bunch of people who are kind of like randomly linked in together and they don't necessarily know each other, then you you end up banging your head against the wall a lot. And all of us in B2B sales have done this where they say, hey, Donald, I see you are linked into so-and-so. Can mm-hmm. you make an introduction for me? Like, sorry, Drew, I don't really know him. And then, then I feel bad because I wasted your time. And you kind yeah. of feel bad because you couldn't help me. And it's kind of a bad feeling cycle. And then I also like, I'm like, oh, I don't really, I don't want to bug Donald again because probably yeah. not going to be a, a hit. And so that happens over and over again. And what we're doing with Connect Dots is that kind of just goes away. Because <laughs> I can see if you, I can say, oh, Donald, you know Elon Musk. Great. You know, I see you have a strong relationship with Elon Musk. Uh, and then I can make a targeted ask and then say, could you make an introduction for me? Now, it's still up. To, it's always yeah. up to the introducer. It's always up to the introducer to say yes or no. You, you might say, sorry, Drew, you know, I can't help out in the situation for whatever. Or you'd be like, yeah, it sounds like something that Elon would be really interested in. I'm happy to make the introduction for you. Um, so, yeah. but, but at least I'm not wasting my time. I can you know, get laser targeted right to the people I'm trying to get to via the people who have the real relationships. So I, and, and statistically, this is where everything is going. So again, the reason why guys, I, I bring on Drew on this episode is because it just makes sense. Um, especially right now, go back to, and I, and one of the things that came back from this Drew last week, I was going through my emails and I probably was deleting about 90% of the cold emails. Mm. My, I opened them. So I was like, you know, these salespeople are getting the kind of, you know, excited with their open rate because the subject line may have been good. But then as I read, I felt like I was being just like a target list or I was being pitched nice. and I wasn't, and there's was no value. And I, like you said, I didn't want to, I didn't, it, I didn't need these things enough for me to go and waste and go do a demo and go to the disco with someone. But um, the LinkedIn also says that, and I, when I, when they said this in the state of sales for last year, I actually thought it was like, that's kind of bold. I'm like, I'm not sure if that's going to be right, but they said that cold emails is actually going to hurt your brand this year. Mm. And and I was like, dang, I'm like, but I'm a cold email person. You got to do cold mm-hmm. email. You mm-hmm. got to do cold outreach. Um, and, and it's not so much cold. They said the unsolicited email could mm-hmm. hurt, your, hurt your brand. And go back to this idea again. If I get a bunch of those emails, I'm just going to be like, who are these folks? It's not like there's no engagement. And I think it's not saying cold emails are bad. It's just that if I'm getting a, on things that are not relevant to me, no mm-hmm. relevance, and I don't have any engagement with that organization or brand, but I'm getting a lot of cold email from them. That is the cause of like, mm-hmm. like distancing myself or disinterest or maybe displeased by your brand in the long run. Am I making sense with that? Totally. And I think, you know, I think we're all, it's actually very simple. We're all kind of simple creatures. We want, yeah. we have problems. We want them to be solved. We do. We, I mean, you know, if you and I sat here and we could list a hundred problems that each of us has that, man, if somebody could show up and say, Hey, I got a magic wand. I can wave this, you know, or this product is going to solve problem number one. And I got this other product that's going to solve problem number two with high confidence. And it's going to be a reasonable, you know, reasonable amount of money to pay for it. And it's easy to implement. And there are lots of testimonials from other people who've you know, solved the problems. We all want our problem solved. The pro- the big mm-hmm. problem is like when people are coming at us. So and and you know, you're you're kind of you got this podcast, you're a pretty high profile guy, so you know, people know that you exist and so they're gonna they're gonna target you. You're gonna be overwhelmed yeah. by that. How do you filter through that? And it's just natural as human beings that you know, filter number one for us is do I know this person? Yeah. Filter number one, do I know this person? You know, and then, you know, filter, and then the, the next part of that would be like, do I trust this person? And, you know, is this person confident and are their intentions good? That, you know, like that is the biggest filter. Just think about it. Somebody comes up to you on the street that you don't know and they, you know, are proposing something to you. You're like, whoa, whoa, <laughs> I don't know you. You know, I got places to go. But if your friend comes up to, up to you on the street, somebody you know, and says, hey, Donald, you know, I got, hey, I think I got something for you. You're going to give that person a minute, you know, to hear them out. So, yeah, I, I think that's, uh, I think that's entirely true that like, uh, 
your brand your brand suffers a little bit when you are when you make a request to somebody's time and it's not considered to be valuable. You suffer just a little bit. Suffer a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I'd agree with that. Well, I mean, I think this is we we evolve. The game has evolved and it's continuing to evolve. So uh, I, I'm a big fan of this and I love it. If folks out there are interested in leveraging relationship, I mean, obviously they can do this on their own. It's going to take them a long time to be able to mm -hmm. do so, but they can definitely take advantage of this tool. How do they go about learning about it, connecting with sure. you um, to, yeah. and all that fun stuff? Yeah, a, a very important point that I didn't bring up is um, it, it's actually Connect the Dots is free for everybody. Um, there's a wait list, uh, so we can't let everybody on all at once, but Anyone can go to our website and create a free account. And the, the website is ctd.ai. So ctd, like connect the dots, dot AI. And uh, click uh, join the wait list. And uh, we'll let you on as fast as, as, we, as we can. If you send an email to me and say uh, that you are on the Sales Evangelist, you heard about us on the Sales Evangelist podcast, then I'll bump you up to the top of the wait list. So anybody who's listening out there. You can email me at drew at hmm. ctd.ai. So there you go. A little, little bonus for listening to the sales evangelist. Um, and uh, so you can set up your own account and keep it for life. Connect all your email accounts to it. Connect your LinkedIn account. And you will see this great uh, organized list of all of your, uh, your contacts and your second degree contacts. Um, third degree contacts is something that's part of our enterprise edition that we sell to companies. Uh, so you won't be able to see that. but you'll see a lot of stuff. Um, that's, a, that's a great way to learn about it. Um, you can also just check out our website. We've got a lot more information about the product on there and, and how people are using it. Well, we love this stuff, man. We'll, we'll put it in our show notes so folks can get access to it and to send you the email. But Drew, thanks for helping to forge these relationships and to help make cool things happen, man. Appreciate you. Donald, thanks a lot for having me today. So we just did all that connecting the dot and you're seeing I me mean, you are seeing what I'm talking about, right? Your mind, your eyes are just open. You got to make sure you check out connect the dot. You can find all the information in the show notes, check out the link and you can get early access. If you go ahead and email drew, we have his email address down below as well, but tell him that you heard, heard about it here on the sales evangelist podcast. My team and I have been taking advantage of this and it's been very effective for us. Relationships are critical. And again, I know this is stuff that, you know, however, we're not doing it because obviously sometimes we have the pressure to get the numbers. Listen, try this strategy, give it a good try, give it for a good 15 days. And tell me if you don't see better results. As always, I want you to thrive and I want you to succeed. We're, our goal is to help you to build pipeline and to convert a high percentage of that pipeline. We want you to raise your level of thinking. Check out our sponsors as well. They're giving you some amazing deals that you can take advantage of for you and your team. But as always, I want you to go out and do big things. I'll see you on the next one.